President Cyril Ramaphosa is expected to deliver the State of the Nation address on Thursday. The speech comes as the country is subjected to the worst power cuts ever. It's also the first sona after an independent panel found that he may have a case to answer over the Palapala saga. It completely shatters now his platform of cleaning up and cleaning out. Rolling blackouts, water shortages, a shaky healthcare system and myriad other state failures. This is the cost of corruption and negligent leadership. He had all these grand promises and a couple of years later everybody's looking at the president going but what is actually being done here? There's still so much that you promised before could not fulfill. Why should we trust anything new? Why are we still in this mess? All we get as the general population is that things are going to get better they will try their best, but there doesn't seem to be any political will to deal with the ESCOM crisis once and for all. There seems to be no end to rising food costs in the country. It now costs more than ever to survive. That's a simple fact. It's unacceptable that we have to bear the brunt of mismanagement. It's highly unacceptable and we stand here in absolute anger. The president needs to put concrete plans on the table at SONA and say, this is what we're going to do. This is when we're going to do it by. He should focus on really giving us a practical plans of what is going to be done. Democrats, South Africans, members of our liberal international community, good evening. Khuyenant Sanbonani Dumelang. I am your host, Karabo Lerato Khakau. Kitoadi Yamu Afrika Mwanana Musoto Yera Kasivili. Mukubunga Mutata Mutivedi Kubu Kubu Nza Maruta Rubone. Welcome to the Democratic Alliance's special broadcast of our 2023 State of the Nation address. We are coming to you live outside the city hall where we're going to hear President Ramaphosa deliver another set of promises for South Africans today. But I am not alone today. I am joined by the Chief Whip of the Official Opposition in Parliament, Siviwe Kwahube, Wushegazi, Molo and welcome. Molo Karabo Kunjan. I'm very well, thank you. Wushegazi, we, it's been a year since the Parliament fire that now took us all out of the National Assembly Chambers to here. Yet we find ourselves here today. Why is that the case? Look, it has been just over a year, as you've said, where Parliament was burnt down. And to this day, we still don't have a comprehensive investigation as to what happened, what went wrong. Uh, despite the South African Police Service investigation, we are still none the wiser about some of the processes that went wrong in Parliament. In addition to that, which is perhaps more concerning, is that Parliament has had a full year to essentially either find an alternative suitable venue for Parliament to congregate in order for members of Parliament to be able to do their work. Ultimately, the work that we do here is not for politicians. The work that we do as Parliament is actually for the people of South Africa. They need to be able to access their Parliament. They need to be able to observe the, the work that is being done in Parliament. And none of that has been possible in a burnt down Parliament. And so here we, we find ourselves in this scenario. But um, of course, as the DA uh, last, uh, about two days ago, we sent through a letter of demand to Parliament to say that it's absolutely critical that this year we find an alternative venue for Parliament so that we can start to do our work and really hold the executive to account and do the work that the people of South Africa sent us to go and do. Um, we cannot keep hiring venues at a great cost, hiring ICT equipment at a great cost. Here we are spending 8 million rand today. And part of the reason why that money is being spent is because we don't have a venue where Parliament can have its own equipment. Great, so many South Africans think that the State of the Nation address is just a fashion show, a fashion parade for, for MPs. But why is this event in particular an important event in our calendar? Yeah. Look, I mean, it's an important event in our calendar in the sense that this is the opening of Parliament. This is an opportunity where the Speaker calls a joint sitting of the two houses, the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces, where the President really is meant to set the tone for the year, to say this is the, the government's action plan for the year. This is what we're going to do as government. This is what we achieved in the last year when we were last here. And so this is why it is important. But 
over the years it has really just degenerated into a red carpet event that is about you know um, politicians really showcasing what they're wearing um, and the designer clothes and that is why the DA caucus this year has decided that there's absolutely nothing to celebrate this year. Uh, South Africans are plunged into darkness. Seven out of ten young people do not have work. 30 million South Africans are living in abject poverty. There's absolutely no reason why any public representative should be donning any uh, fancy clothes to come to Parliament. We are dressed to come to work and we are in solidarity with the people of South Africa today to say that, well, your plight is ours too. Great. So you've touched on this a bit, but both of you and I are dressed in black right now and so is the entire caucus. I just need you to break down for, for South Africans right there. What exactly is the importance of this and the symbol of the color black and why do we need to mourn as a country? Look, we are mourning because of course, Garabo, every single time a business closes its doors and one more person uh, joins the unemployment queue, that is a loss of dignity. And that's something that's enshrined in our constitution. And people are losing dignity because this government has run out of ideas, they run out of rope, and they run out of time. And so we're mourning with the people of South Africa to say, well, unfortunately, the president today does not have any choice either than to announce some really radical reforms. And if he does not, it really confirms what we've long suspected, that the ANC is incapable of pulling South Africa out of this crisis. And so, as I said, we are in solidarity with the people of South Africa to say, we know your plight. We know that without a job, you are without dignity. We know that many of you are unemployed. Many of you are living in grinding poverty. And what we do here is for you. And it's not for us. And that's why we can completely reject the idea of coming here, donning fancy clothes and taking part in any of the ceremony. For us, we've come to work. We respect the institution. In spite of the fact that we don't have any faith in what the president is going to say, we respect the institution and we respect the office of the president. Okay, so the Democratic Alliance clearly cares about South Africans. We do have initiatives in Parliament to get things done and to get things run in favour of South Africans. So what can an ordinary person at home expect from the Democratic Alliance's parliamentary caucus, both in the National Assembly and the NCOP for this calendar? Yeah. Look, it's absolutely critical for us to make sure that the work that we do in Parliament really is a reflection of what are some of the issues facing South Africans the most. For instance, a leader of the opposition has repeatedly tabled in Parliament the fact that government should implement reforms where we are cutting VAT on essential um, uh, household goods to shield South Africans from the harsh cost of living crisis that we've seen. We've uh, proposed to government to say cut the fuel taxes so that South Africans, it can cost them less to get to and from work, it can cost them less to get basic goods. And so these are some of the things that we're going to continue to do in Parliament this year. Great, thank you, Seviwe. Um, Democrats of Africans, that was the chief whip of the official opposition in South Africa's parliament, Seviwe Kwahube. We are now joined by the leader of the official opposition in parliament, John Stienhazen. John, we find ourselves here again. What can we expect from President Ramaphosa's address today? Sabona Karabo, great to be with you and great to obviously be with all the viewers at home. Um, I think we can expect more of the same. Empty promises, uh, big announcements, smoke and mirrors, where it looks like the government's doing something, but nothing's actually happening. Same as last year, we were told the energy crisis was going to be the priority. We've had the worst load shedding we've ever had. We were told that GBV and crime was going to be a priority. Those statistics have gone up. We were told the economy and jobs was a priority. Unemployment has risen. And of course, um, the economy is contracting, not expanding. So I, I think we're going to have another evening of more empty promises, grand plans, bullet trains, smart cities, social compacts that are going to be a lot of noise and a lot of fanfare, but in the end of the day are going to signify nothing. So, I mean, John, the DA is often accused of us not being optimistic um, in our rhetoric and our communication. But our own in-house analysis has shown that of the premises, or promises that were made previously by President Ramaphosa, over 60% of these promises were broken. So, what kind of hope does South Africa have going into this? Are we, are we now going to expect another shocked president? What, what, what kind of commitment to truth and trust do we have? 
Well, look, I mean, I think that the president comes into the zone with his credibility shot to pieces. Nobody believes what he says anymore. But I've never been more hopeful about South Africa and our future now because history has bypassed Sir Ramaphosa. He had his chance. He blew it. Um, he's just added five wasted years to the top of the nine wasted years of Jacob Zuma. There's been no reform, no progress. But we've got an election coming up in less than 15 months' time, and that's going to be the biggest opportunity we have to get rid of these promises and rid of these empty rhetoric and get real delivery, real services, real jobs, real growth onto the table, and that's through an alternative government that excludes uh, Mr. Ramaphosa's majority. So you speak of an alternative government and what's important moving forward. So what would you say are the top priorities going into this address? What do you think if you were to count one, two, three, four, five? Mm. These are the things that the president of the nation has to cover and put emphasis on. How would you list them? Energy crisis, number one. It's blowing our balance sheet. It's destroying our job uh, creation opportunities. It's destroying our economy. We've got to get power into the grid. If I was president tonight, I'd announce I'm getting politicians and ideologues out of the way. I'm bringing in the private sector, I'm bringing international experts, and we're going to fix this energy crisis as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The second thing I would do, cost of living. We've got to address the cost of living crisis in South Africa. South Africans cannot afford to put food on the table. They cannot afford to get to and from their workplace anymore. We've got to address the spiraling cost of living. Third, we've got a crime problem in South Africa. People don't feel safe in their homes, they don't feel safe in their businesses. We've got a police minister who's more interested in clowning around than actually getting to grips with crime. And that is a huge, huge problem. We've got to make sure our education system is overhauled. And then we've got to make absolutely sure that we are liberalizing our employment opportunities so that we can employ more people. We've got to give more people in South Africa the dignity of a job. That is the only way out of poverty and it's the only ladder towards building a better future. Great. Thank you, John. Thank you. We'll hear what the president has to say. And to everybody that's watching, what is clear? is that we need a government that cares, a government that is centered on the interests and needs of people. So we're going to hear what President Ramaphosa has to say today. And we will be specifically looking out on how he is matching the quality of governments we see across DA governments, particularly here in the Western Cape, where residents of the Western Cape are shielded from load shedding from stage to stage, where we're already working with, um, with private sectors and the city and the Western Cape has put money where their mouths are to ensure that residents are shielded. We're also looking forward to hear how, like here in the Western Cape, other provinces across the country are going to experience job creation that is important to increase the quality of life of people, how we're going to get investments in our economy so that we can all tangibly participate in our economy in a fruitful way. So there are a whole lot of things that we're looking to hear from, from the president on how, as young people, we're no longer going to have stories of seven out of ten of us that are sitting outside of employment opportunities but as many of us and majority of us sit within seats of offices we're able to put food on the table not only for ourselves but our families are not able to contribute um, successfully for future generations so we'll hear from President Ramaphosa uh, we'll hear him we're hoping that for the first time in his history as president we'll have more than promises come in today so but we'll be back and we'll have a reaction on what the president has to say don't go away we'll see you later watching like and follow our page on facebook follow us on instagram and twitter subscribe to our youtube channel and hit that notification bell tell us what you think in the comment section and please like and share our videos with your friends and family join the da join the fight to save south africa